What is going on to all my Atlanta fans out there and welcome back to my channel. We are here live from the Kirkwood Chocolate Studios where we're talking Atlanta season four, episode five, titled Work Ethic. Episode in which we see Van being a parent to Lonnie, but more importantly, this episode 100% takes a shot at a very well-known big-time Hollywood figure. We'll be discussing that and so much more in today's spoiler breakdown. But before we get into it, this is your first time tuning into one of my videos. I want to welcome you to the community. If you haven't already, consider subscribing to the channel and hitting that notification bell. That way you can stay up to date with all my daily content. You can also get your boy a follow on Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter. All those links can be found in the description of this video. We're speaking of this video. It would mean the world to me if you all can give this video a thumbs up. Also, share this video to anyone and everyone you know that loves talking about Atlanta just as much as we do. But more importantly, let's talk about this fifth episode in the comments below from, yeah, Tyler Perry. We'll talk about him and the discussion about black opportunities versus kind of exploiting certain things or taking advantage of certain stories. We'll be having a talk about parenting, TikTok, and so much more. And I want to talk to you all in the comments below. So before we get into the break, breakdown just a quick little plug and just a friendly reminder if you all do not know but we dive a little bit deeper into these episodes every single sunday at 12 p.m central time and i'm telling y'all right now go ahead and dvr the football game on sunday tell auntie jenny that you're going to be attending the morning service versus the afternoon service because you're going to want to be here this sunday i'm going to put the description or the link to that stream in the description you're going to want to tune in trust me when i say that but with that being said let's get into the breakdown full spoilers ahead as we open the episode we're seeing van driving to chocolate studios we got little miss lottie in the back seat y'all we haven't seen lottie since season two uh, the season finale when Ern went off to europe now of course that was a different actress and we'll talk about the young lady that plays lottie in this episode because i thought she was great but we see van notices that billboard in the sky that read hire me mr chocolate i could be the funniest mama and we will be talking about chocolate studios really deep dive in this breakdown here but they're making their way up to the studio lot and you know this is the chocolate studios baby prestigious projects such as one small family a broken home i mean they got hit after hit as they're arriving to the gate by this top flight security guard top flight security of the world craig checking all their bags they make their way in and listen this is it this is chocolate factory this is chocolate candy and it is for the culture by the culture moving on oh, secret this uh address the elephant in the room this is definitely a play on tyler perry this episode which we'll talk about in depth but also this is tyler perry studio this is mirroring his studio which happens to be in atlanta georgia and also i'm just gonna say this right now i said last week was my favorite episode of the season now nah, i'm gonna go ahead and make this episode this is god tier this is black god tier mr chocolate tier episodes of atlanta this goes down as one of my favorites of the entire series and we'll get into those thoughts a little bit later but i also got a little hint of teddy perkins in this episode am i wrong in thinking that especially when you look at the isolation that mr chocolate puts himself in did anyone else get some teddy perkin vibes in this episode let's talk about that in the comments but as they make their way into the lobby van's checking in and i don't know if y'all noticed it. it was a small scene really quick scene but i think important scene and I want to pose this to you all in the comments this is for everyone to answer but more importantly parents out there especially in today's generation with TikTok, Instagram trying to go viral how and again this is for everyone but I, I really am reaching out to my parents out there how do you all feel and there's no right or wrong answers about the parents and, and hey you might be one that has fun with their kids they film videos and then they're having fun or sometimes they're not having fun as we see this mom kind of forcing her daughter because i don't want to say forcing because we don't know the whole context but it seems like they've been filming for a bit right because she's like all right go ahead and take a break and we'll film again and she's the daughter we didn't get obviously to see her facial expressions but again there's two ways to look at it there's the side of it where yeah the kid is having fun they're just having a good time maybe bonding of a certain extent right but then there's the other side, right? There's the whole parent wants them to be the star and sometimes the parents are living you know, through their kids because they couldn't make it big. So again, there's no right or wrong answers, but I'm just curious for everyone, how do you all feel about the young generation being on TikTok, being viral, and then their parents being involved, whether that's them filming them or forcing them to film? 
let me know how you all feel about that because that's just one of many conversations that we will be having in this episode because parenting was a very big theme throughout this episode as well as uh, exploiting you know people in this episode was very prominent throughout it but we see this dude who's yelling on the phone which sounds like he's about to kidnap somebody which I'm very curious I know Atlanta doesn't always tie things into it but I would love for that to be like some type of Easter egg for something that's coming later on in the season like maybe Darius is on the phone with him who knows but he's on the phone talking about throw him in the trunk if you have to meanwhile he notices Van who this has nothing to do with the review. Uh, this is just my personal opinion. <laughs> Listen, Zazzy Beats, incredibly talented. We all know this, but goddamn, she is beautiful. I mean, fine with a capital F, but he notices that, right? And a couple other people in this episode notice just how beautiful she is. But he's on the phone like, hey, you know, what's your name? She's like, oh, you know, I'm with my daughter, but hey, I'm Denise. And her whole spot is blowing up when the young lady calls her in by her name. And he's like, all right, they, they call him for you, Denise. I, I just thought that money, that moment was very funny. But as we see Van walking through the hallways, dying laughing. When we see these posters from Ain't Crazy, The Shook, Single Father, Ain't Crazy, the sequel was I'm Still Not Crazy or something like that. The posters, again, I'm going to put on the screen now, very familiar, right? Those those look a little familiar to you all. Wink, wink, nod, nod, Tyler Perry movies. But on a more serious note, let's, let's dive into it right now. Let's talk about it. The Hollywood stereotypical black films, as well as Tyre Perry, who we'll talk about here in a second. The question I have for you all in the comments is, do you personally feel offended by those type of movies? And I'm referring to obviously the mainstream Hollywood black films, whether it's touching on slavery, whether it's family drama, single parents, uh, you know, hood culture, selling drugs, you know, all that different stuff versus, you know, the mainstream stuff that we all love. Superhero content, sci-fi content, horror content, you know, just regular genre content, right? So, do you all feel offended where it seems like, and, and to be fair, I, I'm, I grew, I'm a 90s kid, right? In the 90s, it was very far in between that it was just like, those were just the black movies. Those were the hood movies, and we got the Fridays of the world, the woods of the world, and we were just kind of happy with that, right? And I'm just speaking again from just being a 90s kid. But then as I've gotten older, I would say probably in the last 10 to 15 years, it's broadened out. We've seen ourselves in sci-fi, in Marvel, in DC, in Star Wars. And of course, more recently, when we see ourselves on screen, there's a lot of pushback. It's the woke agenda, this, that, and the third. But let me know again to that second half of the conversation regarding slavery movie after slavery movie, hood movie after hood movie, just showing that one side of a culture, which we obviously know we're not put in a box. We have so many different things that we do. We have rom-com type of stories. We have the sci-fi stories that we can tell. So I'm just curious on how you all feel about that and that being kind of like the market that they only market us in is those type of movies versus trying to find our way into different markets. But more in particularly, Talking about the stories that are told within that market, I'll use this for example because I'm a TV fan and this is just a broader conversation with pop culture and entertainment. I'm thinking about shows like Watchmen and also Lovecraft Country. They Both of those shows, which two of my favorites by the way, I love those shows, they both had the Tulsa race massacre in both of those shows and for a lot of people out there that saw those episodes, they're like, oh, I've never heard of this. Some people thought it was fake. Some people had never even knew it was a real thing, right? So the conversation is, okay, when we have those type of movies and shows, it educates people, right? It puts that out there because God knows when it comes to the educational system. I don't know. I don't have kids, so I don't know how they're teaching kids now. But I know back when I was in school, we wasn't talking about the Tulsa massacres and, and different important figures in the black community and in many different other cultures. So there's that whole conversation that, okay, they make these movies because we have to educate people. We have to show people these stories because they're not showing them or telling them in school. So I see that side of the argument. So again, just very curious on how you all feel about that particular topic. Transitioning into the Tyler Perry comparisons and in particularly the criticisms that Tyler Perry has. Now, I'll just speak for myself. I'm not the biggest Tyler Perry fan. And listen, your boy grew up watching Tyler Perry. My grandmother, God bless her, rest in peace. She used to work at a cab stand. We used to have the $5 hustle man come in there with his, you know, DVD bootlegs of Tyler Perry plays. So I've seen my fair share of Medea, her out there. I've seen most of them, if I'm being honest with you all. But as far 
as how Hollywood views Tyler Perry and also his peers, one of my favorite directors of all time, Spike Lee, he praises Tyler Perry at times, but he also has said some criticisms about him, as you all can see on the screen now. As he states back in 2009 that each artist should be allowed to pursue their artistic endeavors, but I still think that there is a lot of stuff out there today that is, as he quotes, coonery buffoonery and when asked if Perry's success among black audience was a result of just giving black America what they wanted Lee response was the image is troubling so uh, there's a lot of truth in that because that's how I, I'll be honest with you that's how I feel about Tyler Perry projects they just seem to be I don't want to say parodies but they seem to just only focus on the stereotypes again single dad single moms drama drugs hood stuff and just kind of only that and, and almost like poking fun of it which again there's the satire nature of that like yes that is us we we do see ourselves but there's more to it there's more stories to be told but he only wants to seem to focus on those stories and Many other conversations we'll be talking about in a second, but even another little example I'm going to have as far as criticism for Tyler Perry, this was an open letter to Tyler Perry back from 2009 with the NPR. So again, the question at hand is, with that open letter that I just showed you all, that talked about the positives. And there's a lot to be said about Tyler Perry. Number one, opportunities. He gives black people so many opportunities to work within the system, to cut their teeth, to maybe use this as a, you know, a launching pad to, to be a producer, a director, a cinematographer, a composer, whatever the case may be. He gives them opportunities, but at what expense, right? And we'll talk about that conversation that this episode poses, but also the other side of it is, is it embarrassing, right? So, Let's talk about it in the comments below. But again, kind of transitioning back into the episode, they have their conversation like we're having right now as we see Van getting her hair done, which by the way, going back to Tyler Perry, there is a very well-known trope in Tyler Perry films and shows with the terrible wigs. I don't know if y'all saw the one stylist kind of taking off the wig of the black dude and the wig looked terrible, but she's talking to the stylist and they're having a conversation. The, the stylist hair and makeup woman's like, I don't really like the project, but it's a way to make money, right? Like a chocolate fan? Uh, I haven't really watched this stuff in a while, so. I hate it personally. Oh, <laughs> no offense. No. <laughs> no, truly none taken. Yeah, honestly, I don't know. It was just like a quick way to make some good money. It was supporting black art, so I thought that was good. And I'm just to get my bread up. And it's an experience. Exactly. You know, we yeah. deserve that. But you can't be mad at that. You know, again, opportunity. That's the, the conversation that we're having here. But as we, we pivot over, we see one of the, the this man, he comes in there, hidden, making his shot. And we'll talk about, it. I think his name was Shamik, uh, which I don't know if he was a stereotype or a mirror of Shamik Moore. I could be wrong, but we'll talk about him a little bit later. But now we're transitioning into experiencing a chocolate produced TV show, which I think was kind of a nod at the TV shows that Tyler Perry's has out there as we get the moment to experience Charles who isn't happy that his wife has friends and she represents him and his thought friends and all that stuff and it's interrupted by Mr. Chocolate who we'll talk about in a second he tells them to mix up her hair put the hands on the shoulders being very meticulous and micromanaging every single thing that's going on thank you continue on there because as we'll learn later it's his baby. It's his child that he's trying to protect. Again, parenting is a very big theme in this episode. But shout out to Lottie as she tells Charles to shut up. And we see Van like, baby, hold on. We, we can't be talking and all. Shut up. Baby. You have Who to said that? Uh, I'm sorry. That was my daughter. Um Chuck's like, wait a minute, young girl. Say that again and do it the way you did it before. And that just opens the door for a star in the making as we see Lottie gets to be in the scene. And I thought it was just so damn funny. Again, putting her in the scene has no continuity at all. She wasn't in the beginning of the episode. She wasn't established at all. Just throw her in the shot. And the moment here had me dying laughing because I'm a production fan. And I used to, you know, I, I make you know, projects on the side. I make these videos and editing is always fun. And he says one of my favorite lines here, which is, we'll, we'll fix it in post. You are a fan of Marvel projects, DC projects, you know, all these big blockbuster films and even TV shows now. We always hear the thing of, oh, they'll just fix it in post. They'll just add CGI in a post. So I, I just thought as a film fan and TV fan, that was kind of funny. But as we pivot over, again, we see there is another conversation about parenting as one of the parents of one of the young girls who's in the same scene with Lottie says that 
wow, your daughter's really good at this. And she tries to be like, we need to be friends. And, and I don't know if that mom was the same mom on that billboard. I might be wrong there. Sheila Reads, I think was the name on the billboard. I, that might be two different moms. There are two different characters all together. But she's like, hey, we need to maybe work together because your daughter seems to be really good. And she's like, she's a lot better than my daughter in that case there. So again, if you were that parent, if you are that parent, do you take advantage of that and be like, hey, this is a, a, a great way for my daughter to be a part of the industry, make her own lane, make her own income, be her own independent person at such a young age? Or is it too young to be exposed to these type of things? Let's talk about it in the comments below. So as we pivot over, we're now seeing that Van starting to get a little bit nervous of her daughter being on screen. As we get kind of this Auntie Jeannie uh, slash grandmother character in the hair and dressing uh, makeup, she has a moment to kind of laugh at, at Van because I mentioned her to Auntie Jeannie because she kind of takes a little bit of a, a little bit of shade at her when she's talking about, hey, baby, are you, are you religious? Do you believe in God? Are you a Christian? And Van says politely, well, I'm spiritual. And she laughs at her, right? And she has this little quote here that I thought was very interesting that she says, and she throws her two cents again, the grandmother archetype who comes through in the clutch a little bit later. She compares the kids wonder into going into the gates of heaven to kind of this opportunity at Chocolate Studios because again, if you think about Mr. Chocolate, as they say in this episode, he sees everything, he watches everything, he's the black god. It almost kind of ties into this studio being uh, the, the pearly gates, right? So I, I just thought that that comment was very funny, the way she compared that. But then we, we pivot over to Lottie, she's dressing up now, she says that she looks like Doja Cat, which again, for my parents out there, I personally think, I think Lottie's probably seven or eight years old. I don't think kids under the age of, if I'm being honest with you, probably 14, 15 shouldn't be listening to Doja Cat or Megan Thee Stallion. But again, to each their own. I'm not a parent. Everyone has their own cup of tea. But I don't know how Lottie knows of Do Doja Cat. But she's like, hey, I, I look like Doja Cat. And can I film a video? And this just speaks to a greater conversation. She saw that young girl filming a TikTok. And now she's kind of impressionable. And they're like sponges at that age. Hey, I want to film a TikTok because I look like Doja Cat. Again, there's no right or wrong answers. But do you expose? Do you let your kids listen to that type of, not and again i'm not saying doja cat is a terrible telling these girls uh, or young men or anyone at a certain age to do this do that it's it's all up to the parents and how the kid interprets it but i'm just curious how you all felt about that scene but as we kind of pivot over we see that lottie is a natural y'all she is a natural at this and everyone loves her slowly but surely becoming a star as she's getting more and more scenes and i don't know if y'all noticed this but whenever they would transition for another, like another, another stage, a sound stage, they would have, they would name them. And one of the sound stages, and there's a couple other ones that we'll talk about, was Tommy Lester, who R.I.P. to him, OG legend. Y'all might know him as Debo in the Friday franchise. There's another Friday Easter egg a little bit later, but I thought that was pretty cool. But we get the Mr. Maintenance Man shooting a shot. He's from New Orleans. We get a little backstory, and it's important to remember this backstory because we're gonna tie this into a little bit later. There is a, he got this job because he got out of jail. There was a, I think he called it the chocolate program where they give them oppor opportunities. Remember that word, opportunities. And he gives his number to Van, which we'll tie that back to the end. But remember that moment, that opportunities moment. We'll put a circle on that, put a pin on that because we'll tie that back here in a little bit. But as we get another kind of behind the scenes moment here of them shooting another chocolate, I'm very curious on what the name of this movie is going to be as we see that during that time, President Lincoln crying in bed as the war is going on and one of his house, which we can assume was one of his slaves being like, <laughs> she predicts his future. Hope he gets shot in the theater later. Hilarious moment. And again, let me know what's the name of that Lincoln movie. Uh, Lincoln Ain't Right or Lincoln, Lincoln Gonna Get His. Let me know the title of that film in the comments below. But Vance had enough. She demands to see Lottie, who is at this point on the, and again, rest in peace to another legend, John Witherspoon, as we know as Pops. Bang, 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 bang. He, she is on that studio again. Rest in peace to John Witherspoon. But we see that at this point, one of the, the stars and the employees of this operation here who's shooting her 
own pilot and going to be starring in her own pilot tells her that she won't remember any of this and the confusion that's going on because Lottie's on the road to getting a BET award, which again, y'all, it had me dying laughing. And then they transitioned to over to the woman eating a crack sandwich. One of the movies that they mentioned, there was another crazy ass project. It was something about uh, HIV drama. And then it was a black musical where the black professor killed their white students. Oh my goodness, these 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 sitcoms, these shows, these movies, I actually personally want to see them for I can have a good laugh. But again, if y'all know Tyler Perry's work, it's not too far a stretch of imagination. He has movies and shows that are as ridiculous as some of those things that we just talked about. But these projects, again, are leading to awards and there's another conversation that we have to talk about in the comments as they're talking about the bigger picture and supporting the black content and supporting everything black, right? I know, and me, myself, I try my best to, sometimes I'm just like, like I mentioned, I don't watch, I haven't seen the Tyler Perry project in years, but I want to support black folks. I always try to give them the benefit of the doubt and to give, get, open up the opportunity to see them telling new stories, right? But then the, the black guy in the, in the car says, you know, Van says, even OJ say, they say, yeah. Not good. I don't know. He won like 30 NAACP awards and mm -hmm. a bunch of BET ones. Yeah. Yeah, so black awards. So only the white ones matter to you? You know what I mean. Say what you want about Mr. Chocolate, but he's done a lot for the community. Yep. I'm rooting for everybody black. Yeah. Even OJ? Even OJ? Even OJ. Yeah, even OJ, which, hey, I'm just curious, you know, if you are, you know, pro-black, do you live by that mantra? I support everything black. And OJ Simpson, even a Kanye West, or I'm sorry, Ye, Yeezy, uh, do you support him and his whole white lives matter? I'm just curious on how you all feel about that. R. Kelly's of the world, so on and so forth. So many different examples. Do you support everything black? And if you do, just share your thoughts on that. Or if you're like me and kind of like, I kind of pick and choose, right? <laughs> Let me know your thoughts on that in the comments. But transition over to Lottie's scene, which is very meta, very kind of precious. I'm sure there's a Tyler Perry film that's a, a, a you know, an, an addict mom who has a daughter. It's probably a movie out there. I, I can't think of it, but I'm pretty sure there is one. But we see a very meta moment because we see Lottie in this scene saying, Mama, you're supposed to be here for me. You're supposed to protect me, which step outside of that scene and look at Van looking at this scene. And it's almost like Lottie was talking through her through this character, like, Mom, like not say explicitly saying it because we know Lottie was having a good time. But I think it was kind of showing in that meta nature, the kind of subtext, like, help me, Mom, protect me. I'm not I, I shouldn't be here. I shouldn't, you know, be uh, exposed to this type of exploitation at this young age and just going from scene to scene, you know, stage to stage, project to project. So I thought that moment was pretty cool. And like I said, very meta within that moment. But again, y'all, my girl Van has had enough and she's she's fed up. She is ready to see Mr. Chocolate. And I'm like, y'all don't know who y'all mess with. We know Van, she got those hands, if y'all know what I mean, from season three's finale. But as we pivot over to another reference point, now I think it is just so obvious that this is Tyler Perry because there's a moment in one of the earlier scenes where the employees, no one knows what they're doing. Everyone's just kind of running around doing their own thing. They're not like trained or they're not experienced in the studio system. Who actually knows what's going on? <laughs> This goes back to my Tyler Perry comparison, as you all can see on the screen now. Back in 2009, the Writers Guild of America charges filed on him for unfair labor practices from the National Labor Relations Board, allegedly that Tyler Perry's production company were overworking the employees, and long story short, it ended up getting settled. But again, them working so hard, not knowing what to do, working to the bone, that is a very Tyler Perry connection from what happened back in the day. So again, a lot of little Easter eggs connected to Tyler Perry. But as we pivot back into the conversation, now we see this moment here where the Auntie Jenny and the grandmother comes in to help Van look up for Lottie as she shoots those guys who were just taking a cop from another set. I can't remember the name of that movie, but she comes through in the clutch as we see her making her way, which was very Atlanta, creepy, weird moment when she's walking through that black hall. And again, Teddy Perkin vibes all through this. She goes up into the ladder. This is the moment here as she gets the opportunity to meet Mr. Chocolate, which listen, this moment here 
has to be one of my favorite Atlanta moments of all time. She makes it into his office as he's writing his scripts on a piano as that was made by Steve Jobs, which was hilarious. Y'all know who that was, right? That was obviously Donald Glover, him as Mr. Chocolate, which is like, seriously, look on the screen now. I mean, the comparisons are crazy. That is literally a fear of Tyler Perry himself. And he even says the Medea, hello. Oh, hello. So <laughs> listen, it was just hilarious. And at that point in time, we see him again, going back to the Tyler Perry comparison, just in case you all don't believe that this is a Tyler Perry shot. I'm going to put a, a quick little clip for you all. I played it earlier in the video, but I'm going to show you the full video to give you a little bit of reference of how this ties to Tyler Perry. So I don't know if you know this, but all shows on television have a writer's room. I have no writer's room. Nobody writes any of my work. I write it all. What's my point? Work ethic. So there you have it. That was from Tyler Perry's Twitter account from three years ago, talking about the work ethic, which is the title of this video, but also he writes all his scripts just like the Mr. Chocolate did. So the comparisons are off the charts. I loved it. So damn funny. And the, talk about funny. My man's pouring grits into his coffee cup. Moment after money, I, I, I had to pause because I just couldn't stop laughing at this point. And that's not even the funniest moment. As we see that this whole operation runs itself, but again, he calls it his baby. This is his child. This is how he parents, right? Again, the parenting theme so prominent. As Van says, I'm going to call the police. I own the police. I own half of College Park. Uh, last week's moment. Gloria driving off with her dad in the backseat was one of the funniest moments of the season. Go ahead and, and, and move over because we got a new funny moment as Van, he's like, I, Somebody's I can do whatever I want. He's yelling at her. My girl Van grabs those grits, throws on his face, and he's like, I'm just fine. I'm fine. Dude, what I'm telling you right now, that moment, that line, that scene, perfection absolutely perfection at its finest one of the funniest moments i've seen on tv this year as we wrap up as lottie's now in the room and she is like mom i don't want to go i want to do this she's acting out this is the first time we've seen lottie act out because again the parenting moment and we know kids when kids want to do something the parents tell them no this is you know the this is how kids act so and throw shots at them that you're a con you just make unrelatable shit that takes advantage of the people you say you're trying to help. Mr. He brings in, well, I make un unrelatable content. Let me show you your life story as he's been watching her all day from as he calls her a mom that can't afford to feed her only child. She brings up she has the hip friend who was the stylist in the hair and makeup room. She has even a light skinned love interest who has a history with jail. And then she brings up you got the grandmother that has the Holy Spirit and, and, and protects you with the gun. And I bet you even have a a, a, a black, uh, what do you say, a, a baby daddy. He's like, no, he's brown skinned. But again, it just ties into, he tells her, you're a chocolate studio. You're like, you're a chocolate. You are part of the studio. And she tells him. Face it, Vanessa. A cocoa chocolate woman. Well, maybe I am. But that doesn't make you an artist. It doesn't. It makes me a philanthropist. And so many great moments, so many great moments here. As we see the offer being made to Lottie, six seasons, she can be successful up to the age of 20. As Van puts her foot down once again, says no. And Mr. Chocolate says, he promises, I'm going to get her. She's going to be mine one of these days. As Have her. <laughs> She'll be spurned woman number eight when I'm done with her. She's losing blood. Let me know right down in the comments, was it just me or was that one of the most perfect scenes you've seen in this show? I mean, seriously, it was OG Atlanta, classic Atlanta. When I look back on the show, there's so many moments, so many moments as far as just Teddy Perkins, Barbershop, three slaps from last year. I mean, it's just so many iconic moments and go ahead and put this in that icon of just incredible moments of Atlanta. Let me know your thoughts on that as we end the episode with... Van being a mom, being a parent, apologizing for what just happened, exposing her daughter to this and just giving her a taste of, uh, you know, this experience. And she and I, and I really love that moment and what it represents. And she represents matters. I love that moment there and protecting her kid as much as she can before it's too late. And the world's knocking at the front door saying, come here, Lottie, and consumes them. Such a great moment there. As we wrap up with Van, she looks at the card that Shami gave her earlier and it just simply states, you want to have sex? in the boiler room as a very light-skinned thing to say, right? As they're going to make some mac and cheese for lunch. 
This episode was directed by Donald Glover and shout out to Austin L. Fisher who played Lottie in this episode. That young lady did a fantastic job through and through. She was incredible. Donald Glover, genius, not only directing this episode, but playing Mr. Chocolate, a.k.a. Tyler Perry himself. So many great moments. This is God tier, black God tier episodes of Atlanta. But hey, those are just my thoughts. Again, we have so much to talk about in the comments from the parenting conversation that we talked about with TikTok and exposing them to those type of things, listening to music at a certain age, of course, the Tyler Perry comparisons, the black culture as far as social, not social media, but films and TV Having just a market of slavery movies, hood movies, family drama movies versus the broader sci-fi, rom-com, superhero, horror, all that stuff. How do you all feel about that? Supporting everything black. I mean, there's so many conversations that I want to have with you all in the comments. But more importantly, this Sunday, 12 p.m. Central Time. Again, the description, look in the description, click that link, set the reminders you're going to want to be there live because I'll have some very special guests that will be joining us. So, hey. I am very, very excited to talk more about this episode for you all. But again, those are just my thoughts. Again, if you're still here, do me a favor. In the comments right now, go ahead and put hashtag for the culture, by the culture, slash chocolate studios if you're still here in this video again i appreciate every single one of you all before you all leave just a friendly reminder to like the video share the video of course leave your thoughts in the comments subscribe to the channel and hit that notification bell as you can see on the screen now subscribe to the channel check out my other atlanta reviews check out my most recent review we'll see you this sunday and we'll see you on the next breakdown <music>